Welcome to chapter two. It's a follow-up from what you learned in chapter one and focuses on the prefix, prefixes and suffixes as basic word parts used in medical terms. And the learning outcomes for this chapter include defining the most common prefixes used in medical terms, as well as the most common suffix suffixes used in medical terms, and to continue to understand medical terms by analyzing their prefixes and suffixes. This chapter also gives you a lot more practice on correct spelling and pronunciation of medical terms built with the common prefixes and suffixes, and takes a beginning look at common abbreviations used in healthcare. And again, your goal is to complete all the chapter exercises and um, go on to the point and participate in all the exercises included with the student resources. What we've learned so far is that um, word parts fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. Um, the pieces form medical terms. And I like this picture because I think it really shows how a prefix, um, a word root, um, and a suffix all work together to build different terms. So the first term is dysuria, and you can see the dis, the prefix meaning painful, and euro, the combining form, uh, uh, or the root word meaning urine, and ia, the suffix meaning the condition of, so dysuria is the condition of painful urination, cardio, um, and then the suffix um, logi, so cardiology is the study of the heart, and uh, here we have the prefix, the word root, and the suffix, so intracranial, for intracranial and pertaining to within the skull. So really what you're going to have to do is um, start memorizing. Um, so remember a prefix modifies the meaning of the word root, word root or combining form to which it is joined and Prefixes can be learned in groups based on number or based on similar or opposite meaning. So uh, these tables are in your book. And so it's really important that you just start memorizing each of those prefixes because we're going to see these all semester long. So uni meaning one for unilateral, <clears throat> excuse me, mono meaning one for uh, monoural, bi for two or bilateral, di also means two for di diarthric, uh, tri for three trimester, quad for four quadruplets, hemi for half hemiplegia or hemiplegia, semi for semi-recumbent um, or half or partly, multi for many, multicellular, and poly for many or much. An important concept with prefixes um, with the same meaning, um, we need to really think about that because several prefixes have the same basic meaning. However, they are not always used interchangeably with a given word group. So um, the book gives the example, uh, by and die both mean two, but it would be incorrect to use the prefix die with the word lateral to indicate both sides. The correct term is bilateral, and unfortunately, there are no rules on the usage of prefixes with the same meaning. However, you'll learn which prefix goes with each word root as you encounter the medical terms as we go through the chapters. Below, these are prefixes involving negation. So our previous table was prefixes involving numbers. So prefixes involving negation are a or an, meaning without or not. So a febrile, without a fever, anaerobic, without oxygen. Anti or contra is against, so antibacterial, 
that's an agent that's active against bacterial and contraception is the prevention of conception or pregnancy. Uh, D or away from cessation without is deaminase and that's an enzyme that takes away an amino group from a compound. Uh, dis or separate um, or to separate is disarticulate. That is a separation of bones at the joint. M, in, or non means not, and uh, an example would be impotent, not able to perform sexual intercourse, incompetent, not capable, and non-infectious, not able to spread a disease. So be sure to um, do the exercises in the book, exercise one and two, um, on the prefixes, prefixes involving numbers, and exercise three, um, practicing um, prefixes involving negation. Now, the next table is prefixes involving position, time, or direction. And ab means away from, so abduction, move a limb away from the body's midline. Add to or toward adduction, move a limb towards the body's midline. Act or acto is outer or outside. So the ectoderm is the outer layer of cells in the embryo. N, end, or endo is in or within. So endemic, it's a present within a region or group. And endocardium, the innermost layer of the heart. X or exo, out of, away from. So to exhale, breathe out. Exoenzyme, enzyme that functions outside the cell. Infra, uh, below or beneath. Infrasplenic, below the spleen. Inter, between, intercostal, between the ribs, intra, within, intraarticular, within the cavity or joint. So those are common prefixes involving position, time, and direction. So those, these are really important to know, so you want to make sure you start memorizing them. Um, additionally, per, for through, percutaneous, is the passage of a substance through unbroken skin. Peri, around or surrounding, so pericarditis, inflammation of the membrane around the heart. Post, for after, behind, for postmortem, occurring after death. Pre, meaning before, in time or space. Precancerous, that's a lesion that has not yet become cancerous. Sub, for below or beneath. Subcutaneous, meaning beneath the skin. Super or supra, meaning above, super infection, a new infection beyond the one that is already present, and super renal, above the kidney. Sim or sim, together with symphysis, a type of joint where bones come together, and synapse, where one nerve cell meets another. Trans, meaning across or through, so transection, a cutting across. Important to practice these exercises four and five give you some uh, spelling practice with prefixes involving position, time, or direction. Uh, with prefixes invol involving relative characteristics, um, that is relative to something else. Um, relative means there's a relationship to something else or something can be compared to something else. You've already seen some relative prefixes in the preceding categories, including pre prefixes involving time, this happened before that, or space, this is located beneath that. And then they, these pre prefixes coming up describe a quality or characteristic of something compared to a normal situation. So hypertensive, normotensive, and hypotensive these different prefixes used with the same word root and suffix can um, change the word meaning and the patient's care dramatically. So important to start learning these. So prefixes involving, involving relative characteristics. Um, I'm not going to read every one of these, but um, dys, dyspepsia. Um, you uh, sometimes you, you really need to listen to the dictionary and prep you. EU is pronounced U, eupeptic, um, hetero for heterogeneous, homo for homogeneous, um, homometric, hyper for hypertension, hypo for hypoglycemia, iso for isomorphous, macro for macrosomia, 
mega or a megalo for megadose or megalosplenia, micro for microcardia, normo for normotensive, pan for um, panlabar, and ultra for ultrasonog ultrasonograph. Um, be sure that you listen to the words um, as well as um, practice writing them. Some other common prefixes, brady for slow, bradycardia, neo for new neonate, um, pseudo for false pseudo malignancy, re for reactive, tachy for tachycardia. And these all can be practiced in the chapter in exercises six, seven, and eight. Um, some other common suffixes, um, uh, so now those were prefixes, now we're moving on to suffixes. So like a prefix, a suffix modifies the meaning of the word root to which it's joined, and suffixes can be learned in groups based on similar or opposite meanings, um, um, as seen in the following table. So many medical terms have a suffix. A suffix and a combining form together usually form a noun or an adjective. Adjective. So, alga for pain, myalgia, emia for blood or hypoxemia, um, ia for pneumonia, um, ism for albinism, itis for inflammation or gastritis, megaly for large or cardiomegaly, is an example, oma for tumor or osteoma, osis, abnormal condition or osteoporosis. Pathy for disease or craniopathy, rhea for flow or discharge, um, and diarrhea. Uh, additionally, suffixes related to surgery, um, and we're going to actually have a whole chapter on surgery, centesis for a puncture to remove fluid, like an amniocentesis, and ectomy is the surgical removal, like an ap ap appendectomy. Plasty is the surgical repair or reconstruction, like a abdominoplasty, uh, raphe, or uh, suturing uh, cystoraphy, um, sorry, raphe, uh, pH sounds like an F, stomy, a surgical off, um, opening like a colostomy, and um, tomy, an incision or cust, um, cutting like a um, gastromy. So be sure to practice those in exercises 9, 10, 11, and 12. Um, lots of other suffixes here. Um, al for pertaining to cranial, r for pertaining to articular, ere for pertaining to um, for pulmonary, ick uh, for cardia uh, cardiac, um, ick or ac, um, us for edematous, uh, genetic gene um, genesis for carcinogenic or osteogenesis, gram for cystogram, graphy for radiography. Um, EM for myocardium, um, logist or is for dermatologist or dentist for one who specializes in, logi for dermatology, meter for thermometer, uh, um, oid for something like lymphoid, scope for microscope, and scopy for endoscopy. So really memorize these because these will be on your weekly and your midterm exam. So important that you understand. So different suffixes combined with the same root, word group help distinguish terms within the same specialty. So once you understand a single word, a root word, you can begin adding prefixes or suffixes to further clarify the root word. Even though the terms are related to the same specialty, because they share the same word, uh, root word, they have very different meanings based on the prefixes and suffixes that are added. This gives some examples with uh, radiography, and this is a picture of a radiology suite, a radiographer, a radiologist, and those all mean very different things. Um, some common suffixes. Um, some suffixes are very closely related and are easily confused. Use, for example, scope means an instrument for examination, whereas scopy means the process of examination. So a gastroscope is an instrument used for examining the stomach, while gastroscopy refers to the actual examination using the gastroscope. Um, so there are many medical terms with these suffixes, so a good understanding of them now will lead to less confusion and easier memorization later on. Um, common abbreviations, I'll go into those in the next section.